After years of judging, critiquing, hating on some of your hot takes, today, I'm gonna share some of mine. It is only fair, after all, that if I put others' opinions up for debate, contention, ridicule, that I do the same for myself. Yeah. Because like you, I too am just a guy who has a few takes and opinions that I wouldn't dare say out loud in fear of having my ball knowledge put into question. What's a hot take, Jack? Give me a hot take for you. Question. But today, I'm gonna do just that. So here are my NBA hot takes. Yo mama. I usually try to stay as objective and non-biased as I can. Do my research, my, refer to film, religion. gather consensus when necessary. But in this video, I'm doing none of that. And instead, sharing with y'all five of my NBA hot takes. All right, so my first hot take is kind of hard to admit. One of my hot takes is about Russell Westbrook MVP season, but we ain't gonna talk about that. I want niggas with their pitchforks. I almost don't even want to say it out loud, but I'm going to. Tim Duncan has become overrated. Now, before you bring out the torches, hear me out. That's when Tim Duncan was playing, there were maybe a few I... seasons. Yo, Abdi, on God, hard as shit away. <laughs> How do I go say that? <laughs> Yo, Abdi, Abdi. <laughs> Yo, Abdi. <laughs> throughout his 19 year career, where he was considered the best player in Abdi, the world. Bro. No one ever thought he was better than Shaq in his prime. Many fans at the time argued that KG had a higher peak than him, although I would disagree with this. How y'all feel in about the, the Tim moment, Duncan take, For a though? good decade or so, you would be in the minority if you thought Tim Duncan was a better basketball player than Kobe Bryant. By the time Duncan retired, he was very underrated. Most fans had him somewhere around 15th, maybe yep, just be, outside yep. the top 10 greatest players of all time. But miraculously, over the past five years or so, Timmy has creeped from 15th to 13th to top 10 to where he probably should be, somewhere around seven, to now all the way within people's top five, no, he's even not. top three players Ever. Never, and this isn't just a small three. community of Tim Duncan advocates He's pushing nobody's his top three. I'm seeing Duncan floating anywhere from top five to top three all time for a lot of fans you know, these days. Even people that. claiming Stupid he may just That's be it. the greatest basketball player of just all dumb time. Ass old heads. That's it. Guys, Tim Duncan was incredible. The best power forward of all time. He is not one of the five greatest players ever, let alone the GOAT. And I think what's probably happening here is younger or maybe newer fans of the NBA are looking at his accolades and accomplishments and comparing them side by side to other greats and saying, wow, this guy really did a lot and his resume is better than just about anyone ever. But if you watched lot. Duncan's career unfold in real time, you would have felt the impact he had on the league and on the Spurs, but you would have also felt the massive role that the Spurs system and Popovich's coaching excellence played on Duncan. He was unbelievably consistent. He was a defensive juggernaut. He was a leader. But Duncan was also the beneficiary of the most competent organization in the league that prioritized team ball and continuity. From Hall of Fame teammates he played with for the majority of his career to all-time greats that played big roles in helping the Spurs win championships, oh, Duncan was takes. always surrounded by winning culture and winning teammates. This is by no means a knock on him. In fact, he was a big reason why the Spurs were so cohesive. But only in retrospect would you look at his laundry list of accomplishments and neglect all of the details that came with it. For many years, the Spurs as a team and organization were seen as this staple of excellence more than Tim Duncan was as an individual. It wasn't Duncan and the Spurs. It was just the Spurs. They were one and the question. same. Not this. I have a question. How many years did Jordan play? I always thought about this. How many years did Jordan play? Three. Six. What the fuck? Thirteen. What year is LeBron in right now? Was it year 21? Oh, that, that's actually insane. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> okay. Wow. That's actually crazy. So, let's say LeBron's career ended in 2018, right? Like, 2018, 2017, right? It just ended there. So, no no bubble shit, none of that. Would he still be the GOAT to a lot of people? Or is it the longevity thing that, like, plays a big part? You took away the championship? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. That's my biggest thing. The longevity is just other. I don't think anybody in NBA history will be as consistent for that long. That's that's like that's that's my thing on with with Bron Bron. 
pretty it's good. The, it's the longevity thing, bro. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Team with a fantastically like great player on it. But if you just look at his resume, you wouldn't know that. You could argue Duncan had maybe a top three career in NBA history. It literally doesn't make sense. Like, there's niggas that have played that long, but by that time, they're butt. Bron's not butt. But as a player, he's just not on the same tier as Jordan or LeBron or Kareem. I don't know how after. What is that? Why? How is that possible, my nigga? That nigga bones, that nigga, that nigga's muscles, how? He retired. He has slowly crept past Shaq and Bird and Russell and even Magic for some people. Duncan is one of my all time favorite players, but he is not a top five player in NBA history. And it's odd to see a player who was so underrated for so many years. New age tech, that's true, but bro, there's people that can use that same new age tech and they will still won't be as longevity as him, bro. It's it's a common it's it's just them genetics too, bro. He has top like I don't know. Become slightly overrated today. Now, I'd like to think of myself as sort of a board member, an executive within the organization of LeBron fans and Glazers. This will be defending Duncan? Let me see. Anthony Davis versus Tim Duncan on offense. I mean, Anthony Davis is by far the better offensive player. Bro, Anthony Davis, three-point shot, mid-range, can put the ball on the floor. He can do turnarounds. He has one of the best footworks inside. You have no idea how good Tim Duncan was. Oh, my God. Yo, chill, 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 chill. Yo, chill. This is that AD just just not as like, the thing with Tim. He was just so consistent. AD will have a fucking forty. AD will have a game where he looks like the fucking goat, like the best fucking big of all time. Then he have a game like yo, why are you pussy? LeBron has sabotaged many good situations throughout his time in the NBA, and his career as a whole has suffered because of it. We all know that LeBron has been held back by some bad front offices, At selfish teams. Not as of late, but there's so many times. Made terrible happened. roster constructions. But what doesn't get talked about enough is how he has gone out of his way to try to make good. Chat, who do you think should have won a bubble MVP, AD or Bron Bron? AD was him, bro. Like him. Like, I'm not even taking that away from Bron, but oh my God. AD was like, that nigga was so fucking good, bro. Like, situations better and has uh, inadvertently bro, ended up wrong. just ruining like, things for himself in the hella process. Close, hella like close. in 2014, hella when close. he decided to sign with the Cavs instead of staying with the Heat. Why did he do that? Well, we all know why. The Heat were getting old, Wade was past his prime, and the Cavaliers had AD the cap had space and a right budding young star in Kyrie Irving to help reel Braun back to Cleveland. This decision eventually led to a championship, but what if he just stayed with the Heat? With Pat Riley and Spolstra, where there's culture and accountability, I imagine his career would have played out even better considering where the Heat are today. Or what about when the Cavs went to back-to-back -back finals in 2016 and 2017, but since LeBron didn't feel they had enough to win it all, he orchestrated an entire implosion of their roster, which ended up being vastly worse, and then just left them again once things were beyond repair. Or most recently, when the Lakers won a championship in 2020, and instead of reloading with the same roster, the Lakers returned with a whole new team just two seasons later. These decisions do not happen without LeBron's okay. Throughout his career, he has been so quick to want more, want something better, and he can't wait around for it to happen organically, so he tries to force these things to happen. And when it doesn't work out, which it hasn't worked out a lot, the organization, the coaching staff, and even his own teammates end up taking the fall. As great as he is, LeBron has tried to play GM way too often in his career. And when he can't or he's out of options, he just moves on to the next new shiny thing. If he just stayed with the Heat or stayed with the Cavs or allowed rosters to build chemistry and young players to develop naturally over time, I think his career and the perception of it would probably be better right now. LeBron has willed okay. his way to some of the greatest feats the sport has okay. ever seen, but he has also sabotaged a lot of good things along the way. Now, here's a hot take for you, and I don't care if I'm wrong. The corner three is not the easiest three-point shot. For years, everyone has said the corner three is easier than any three-pointer, and so there's an advantage. They say that because it's, it's technically the closest. It's capped, though. I don't give a fuck. Advantage to be had there if you use them right. I wholeheartedly disagree. In the NBA, sure, the corner three is shorter than on the wing or at the top of the key, but if you play ball, you know this shot is as scuffed as it gets. When you're looking at the hoop straight on, you just have a wide... <laughs> you know what? 
nuts as scuffed as it gets. Tighter margin That's of error. Next. You can shoot long and bank it in. You have a better perception of depth since you're looking at the backboard. It may just be psychological, but whatever it is, you cannot convince me that this shot is easier than this shot. According to NBA.com, this season, the league as a whole is shooting 39% from corner threes, whereas above the break, teams are shooting 36.1% on average. Now, that's a substantial difference in efficiency from these two different shooting zones, oh. and it would lead you to believe the corner three is easier. But I think shooting percentage is higher on corner threes than threes above the break for two reasons. Why? One. The best shooters in the league, the guys who are on NBA rosters to drill a few threes a game, They're usually the spend the most time in the, in the corner. corner. They're and in the since corner. most players who set up shots in that nigga to the corner, the corner are sharp shooters. The overall That's efficiency true. from corner threes Context. is boosted compared That's to on the wing or at the top of the key. And reason number two, a lot of threes taken above the break are pulled up off of dribbles, players flying off of screens trying to square up and get a good shot off. And many times, the players attempting these kinds of threes are the best player on their team, but not the best shooters. Uh -huh. On the other hand, corner threes are almost exclusively set shots coming off of passes to a wide open man. Yo. The very nature of Yo, offenses in the NBA makes these corner threes Jimmy. easier than any other threes, because plays are often drawn up to get open looks from here from the best shooters in the world shooting set shots with no one contesting corner threes especially those real deep ones where you feel like you're behind so the backboard are you not easier than any other three-pointer now i know i'm gonna catch some flack for this next take and that's okay because in a redraft of every player in nba history just after their rookie season oh my just after rookie season Make sure, pretend you have no knowledge of any other season after that. Just after rookie. I would pick Victor Wembanyama first overall. You, you might say this is just recency bias. You may think I'm crazy. Trying to see who I. That's not that bad, Wembies. That's not that bad of a take. I'm not gonna lie. Listen, mind you, just take. All seasons after that out of the equations. You only have memory of the rookie season. And you're probably right. But Wemby would be my first pick. His progression, his poise, his confidence, his skill set, his... D-Rose. D-Rose. And then boys. Game 7. Celtics. Eastern Conference. I remember, nigga. D-Rose is up there, too. Don't get it fucked up. And he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rondo, dicking that nigga. You know, I say couldn't guard that nigga. That's a rookie. <laughs> six, six foot three, by the way. But you got to understand, Wemby is a 7'4". Is that nigga actually even 7'4", bro? That nigga might be tall. I don't know. That nigga's a Debbie God, bro. How tall is Wemby? What's he, listed? What's he listed as? Sure. If you lined up every great player since the inception of the NBA, and if we're just going off of what we've seen from them in their rookie season, I would pick the kid in San Antonio. Now, my answer may be different if I were to pick anyone before they played in an NBA game. Maybe it's LeBron or Kareem. But based on what we know so far, give me the seven foot four inch alien. Wemby can do everything on the court. He's got the offensive skills, the defensive ability, and willingness. From what has been said about him, he is like a sponge with information. He's learning exceptionally fast on the court. And I think what's just as impressive as his physical tools, the kid is not afraid of the moment. He isn't timid, he can talk trash and take it too. He's got heart, and you can tell he really loves the game. Now, I think some players who are up there with him for the first overall pick in a redraft post-rookie season might be Shaq, Kareem, MJ. Duncan was incredible as a rookie. Maybe Hakeem. Michael George, what the fuck? As a rookie gang? <laughs> like, what the fuck is the numbers, bro? Hakeem, overall, their numbers are about equally as impressive. But the thing that stands out about Victor is that he's doing this at 19, 20 years old on a minutes restriction. He's all th bro, I've always this is on minutes restriction gang. Already an elite two-way player, possibly even the best defensive player in the entire league. And he has the advantage of playing in an era where he is allowed to develop a well-rounded offensive. Drone verse for plumbers. Alright, what is this day and age? You're going against TikTokers, nigga. I don't give a fuck. 
What? ...of game from the post all the way out to the perimeter. Something that Shaq, Hakeem, and Kareem... I'd rather fight a TikToker than a plumber, that's all I'm saying. Kareem ...never... ...fucking pod, niggas doing podcast post-game. Like, what? ...had. The improvements he's made he's from his Joe first Budden. game this season to now are already so massive that his progress alone really makes him stand out even amongst the greatest rookies ever. And quite frankly, I never witnessed these other players play in their rookie seasons. I wasn't there to see it in this real- This nigga a fucking unicorn. No, that's a real unicorn. Yo, yo. Time. And of all the rookies I have seen over the last 15 years or so, Wembenyama is way ahead of all of them. Is this a terrible argument to make here? Sure. Does that change my pick? No. If you can ignore what we know about these players outside of their first season in the league, and if you had to choose one of them, I think Wimby would go first overall. At least for me, he would. By the time these other players came into the league, they were already relatively polished. Jordan was still pretty raw, and LeBron was playing off of sheer athleticism. But Wemby is having one of the greatest rookie seasons ever. What if he just ends up being like Chris Stops? Which is not bad, but like, you know? The, the expectations they have on this nigga? <laughs> the expectations they have on this nigga? Stop. Bro, I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> Chris Stops got his ACL torn by Giannis. Yo, I mean, how much do you hate Giannis, bro? Come on, listen, we have to, we have to fuck with Giannis, bro. We have to fuck with Giannis, bro. Kristaps was an MVP toss that Giannis tore his ACL. <laughs> I love Giannis. Sometimes I feel like you hate Giannis, bro. I think you like his game, but I don't know. I'm critical. Ever, and just by watching him, you can tell he's still just learning how to play in the NBA. So not only is he already incredible, he's just barely scratching the surface of his potential. Now, can this take come back to bite me in the ass? It sure can, oh, yeah! but I don't care. If I could choose Dang! any player in NBA history based Yo, fuck Lopez. off of their rookie season and their potential and trajectory, I'm picking Victor Wembanyama. Now, I don't know if this last take is even a hot one anymore, but it needs to be said. The 2017 Warriors are by far the best NBA team ever. Not, not just the best take. team assembled, not, not the best team on paper. They a are, take. by a pretty wide margin, the best, most cohesive team in NBA history. And James Harden took them niggas to seven. I'm just saying, buddy. <laughs> I'm just saying, buddy. Over the years, people will argue that the 96 Bulls were better, or the 2000 Lakers, no, or if not. they're really out of their mind, they'll say the 86 Celtics. But no. The 2017 Warriors would dog threes, rigged game. Go watch it over rigged game. Walk any team you put in front of them. They were so good that it pissed people off. They were so good that everyone unanimously agreed that it wasn't even fair. It's been long enough now that the painful hopelessness that this team inflicted upon NBA fans around the world has subsided. But I'm sure we can all- I don't understand how much I wanted the Rockets to smoke these niggas. I wanted the Rockets- Oh my- I wanted to see Twitter. Oh, I wanted it to happen so bad. So bad. But the script wouldn't let it happen. It wouldn't. I don't give a fuck how many threes they missed, bro. And it was still that close. Bro. Still remember just how overwhelming- Took him out of the game, bro. Took him out of the game, bro. You can't hit when you're not getting no calls, man. Team was. They made really good teams look incompetent. I mean, they had everything. Arguably the greatest player in the world at the time, the greatest shooter ever at the peak of his powers, the most versatile defender in the league, arguably the second greatest shooter ever, and somehow still managed to have a very solid, well-rounded bench. And Wait, not only times? did they have- Do I have to rewatch it? Do we, do we got to rewatch that Rick Daz video game by game highlights again, or, or what? have the most no, talent, good. but all okay. of that talent worked really well together. All of their skill sets and intentions meshed about as well as a team could. So not only were they the most loaded team in NBA history, they all bought in and they all just wanted to win. So I not only think they're the best team ever, I don't even think it's close. Pick any other team to go yes. against them, specifically the 2017 version of the Warriors, and the opposing team would be lucky to sneak one, maybe two wins and a seven. Rockets took him to seven. Fuck out of here. Up by 12, by the way, in the second quarter. No land in space, no nothing. Even the announcer's like, uh, what? It's Foul! Straight yep. up! No kicking, no nothing! Yes. Just trust the nigga! 
Shay's getting fucking. He's getting set to the line ten, ten times right off that call. Literally foul. Literally a foul. Literally a foul. Literally a foul. It's literally a foul. Shay's getting fifteen calls right there. Even, look, and listen to the announcers. Look at the announcers. In my opinion, was foul. Yes. yes. Chat. How do you hit that shot? How is that not a foul? This is game seven. They say that's not shooting. They said that wasn't shooting. They said. <laughs> they took away the fucking. <laughs> yo, yo, chat. They took away the shots. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Tell me what you're supposed to do. You're going against the best team of all time. Decisive game in this Western Conference final. Chat, where the else was the foul? I think this is a shot. This is the third call that he's missed. I think this is good. This is the third. Bro, bro, where else was the foul? Chat, where else was the foul? Yo, this is what you're bragging about, really? Just taking them out the game. Mind you, they're up in the third. About Houston going to their smallest and quickest lineup. <laughs> Contact on this play. Wow. I think that was a foul. Wow. But how about Tucker inside? Uh, that's, that's <laughs> definitely a, that's a double foul. Oh my! I hate the. I always hated the Warriors for this shit. They always did this bullshit. I hated the Warriors for this shit. This was their signature, bro. Draymond would do this shit. Oh boy. Screen though by Jordan Bell, the moving screen. All you have to do is call it like you see it. Ah! Ah! And I tell you one thing about rookie. That nigga, nigga playing football. That nigga blocking for that nigga. On Golden State, and as Harden goes up for the shot. The foul is called as a combination of Durant and Bell for the rally going at Ariza. Pulls it up for the jumper. What? Two shots for Kevin Durant. And it was just GG after that. You, they, they're not, they're, they're, they're out of it. Man, that's just it. It's just cooked. GG's. Need a rigging versus CP3 less Rockets. Bro. It was. Now we have to watch the Kyrie Irving shot on the Warriors for a palate cleanse. You know what? We do. That Derek White game winner last playoffs was a shotgun slug to my chest. If this shit <laughs> happened to my team, I dead ask myself. Yo, chill, bro. Chill, bro. Chill, bro. Where were y'all when this happened, chat? Where the fuck were y'all? What were you doing in life? Come up on a minute remaining. And they're putting Curry in the pick and roll, trying to get him on Irving. Irving and Curry, one on one. Irving puts it up. That is just, that is just, and knowing everything behind this, how good Kyrie and Brown were doing in these finals on some duo, on some Batman and bro, and knowing the dry spell that was happening these last few minutes before this shot, the blood, bro. It was just the greatest thing I've ever seen, bro. And who he did it on, it was like. A thing from a movie. You couldn't ask for a better ending. It was. I won't lie, the refs called a fair game. Cinema. And they're putting Curry in the pick and roll, trying to get him. Oh my God, Curry! Ah, oh, Curry! This is this is what this is what dreams are made of, bro. Iso. Fuck a screen. Me and you, nigga. Let me show you some. Let me show you some. Let me show you some. Fourth quarter for Cleveland, including this one. They came out of the timeout set to get Steph Curry on Come Kyrie Irving. They get exactly what they want. Everybody out of my way. It's time to dance. Get some one on one. Laws of the sweep. Forces a late contest. That's a big time offensive play by Kyrie Irving, but Oakland, it's a play he's bro. made his entire life. The ability to. Oh my goodness gracious, bro. <sighs> Kyrie, you will forever have a place in my heart, bro. You are just. That is fearless, my nigga. Cold, cold, cold. I'll let Kyrie fuck me, then KD ruin that beer. Bro, even though y'all say can't, if you know Katie ruined that man, it was, it was interesting. Whoever gets to, see. to date Bronny and Bryce will get to say that they kissed LeBron's spam.
Anyone want to turn into a girl with me chat? This is the closest we will ever get to a goat. Eh, what? Who like a dream dynamic duo that you think would dick the NBA? Mine's is LeBron and Curry. Y'all gonna see y'all gonna see in this playoffs if the Heat lose um eh, what? Dame and Giannis dick Bro Rage league. can we not? I'm a Rockets fan and this shit gets me so mad every time I think about us going against the Warriors and how they would hoe us with no fouls and call everything on us. Hold on PTSD. Eh, what? 2016 game seven Here's was on thing, Father's Abdi. Day. If no one else remembers, he has the and my family went. He has the ability to set some good ass screens. He just be I don't know what the fuck he be doing sometimes. He can set a good screen. I don't know why he does that. God damn, lazy ass fucking. Screen. Heat and Dame. If it's not the Heat or whatever team Dame is on. I don't care. I just want to see peak. I just want to see good hoops. Okay, that was like me versus the when I was watching Warriors, Cavs, Warriors. I just want to see peak. I don't really care who won in that moment. Years after that, yeah, I always wanted. I'm sorry, I might be a hit. I wanted Warriors to lose against whoever they were going against. I ain't gonna lie. I wanted Bron to beat them niggas. I wanted all that shit. Obviously, it didn't happen. I'm not a hater. I just wanted to see a good underdog shit. But when it was Warriors versus Cavs, it just felt like like it was even. 3-1, like, bro, I, just, I don't care who won. It was just good. It was just peak. It was just cinema, bro. It was just cinema. It was just cinema. Hater? Bro, I'm a hater for that. I'm a hater for not wanting that sh them niggas to win, bro. Bro, it's not being a hate. Like, I, it's not, I didn't hate KD, though. I didn't hate KD. I was like, damn, I kind of don't want it to be what everybody already knows what's going to happen. I want an upset. Bro, when Kawhi got hurt, bro, when Kawhi got hurt, bro, like, I dead fell to my knees, bro. Zaza, a bitch, no. I hate, look, if there was a ranking for the top NBA players I hit all the time, Zaza was, like, top three. I hated Zaza. Zaza, Pachulia as a whole. D-Rose, Westbrook, Zaza. How do you hate D-Rose and Westbrook? You're just a fucking loser. Oh, my God, chat. I forgot. Yo, yo, yo. Hold on. <laughs> I just see the donut. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Who remembers this shit? We've had four lead changes in overtime already. Yeah, if I'm Steve. Durant go to work. It's Durant. Makes a move. Lost the ball. Tries to get it. Saves it. Saved inside. Outside Curry. Two. <laughs> Jeff, this is crazy. This is. This was Already. Yeah, if I'm Steve Kerr, I gotta get the ball. Harden hit the game. Harden game that bitch, though, right? Harden still game that bitch, right? I like the mismatch of Rivers. So I'd run a screen and roll with that to see if they can get a little size. Bro, they really tried to put these niggas in the. Like, bro. Work. It's Durant. Harden game this bitch. Lost the ball, tries to get it, saves it. Saved inside. That's crazy. Outside Curry. Two. Clean as fuck. Steph Curry's playing 35. What a scramble play. Harden with 41. Harden with 41. <laughs> Cavs with 41. Got two on him. Harden makes a move. Lost the ball. Kick ball, 5.5. Smart play. It'll be interesting to see on replay if Durant was out of bounds as he saved that ball. Out, out. Absolutely he's out. out. Wow. I mean, how that? do you miss that? that <laughs> and Yo, here's the shot. They be seeing when, 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 when the speck of a nigga's foot is touching a line, let alone that. I don't understand. Like, what was going on there? By Steph Curry. Good move in, too. Got by Rivers and knocked down the juice. Well, let me see where the officials are. There's an official right here. Oh, oh, oh. Ah! Ah! What the fuck? Miss that. that... <laughs> and here's the shot. By Steph Curry. Good move in, too. Got by Rivers and knocked down the juice. There's an official right here, chat. Look at my mouth. Well, let me see where the officials are. Right there. 
Right here. I mean, how do you miss that? <laughs> how do you miss that? Oh, they, they didn't show hard a shot. At 23 on the evening for Houston. Are they going for 21 in the oh, game? Oh, that is Mikey. Is he back? Gerald Green to inbound. Harden trying to get free. Oh, down to three. Down to oh, that was so beautiful. I forgot. Oh, it's a three. Good! Yo, my God. This nigga is, was a... Yo, this nigga is a demon. Demon. At 23. Team, this is the type of shit you got to pull out your ass to beat this goddamn team. On the this is the type of shit you have to pull out your ass to beat this team, bro. For Houston, are they going for 21 in the game? Gerald Green to inbound. Harden it's trying on. to get... Broke this fuck, nigga. Three. Down to three. Oh, my. Down to two. Oh, my God. It's a three. Good! Good! He got it! James Harden, a flamethrower! Incredible shot! Rockets one by one! one stop. With one That's second! That's incredible. Prime James Harden or Luka Josh? Prime, Prime James Harden took, 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 took these things to seven. I need to see a little bit more out of Luka. You know what I'm saying? But Luka's looking like the GOAT. <laughs> Luka be looking like the GOAT, and I ain't gonna care, bro. I don't know. Sometimes nigga Luka just like, he's the best player I've ever seen in my life. I ain't gonna lie. But I still got me some Harden. For right now. Harden dropper. He, Harden Ray, is an overall can playoff you touch dropper. Your nose with your tongue. No, Harden is a overall. Maybe Harden is an overall playoff dropper, though. I'm not gonna lie. Playoff dropper. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Him and who else? Is MB is MB a playoff? He be hurt though. MB be hurt. Is MB a playoff dropper? Riser is the Mac. Yo, there's something about Jimmy gets hashtag in that mode. I don't know what is wrong with that nigga. I swear, this thing, it's a mental thing, bro. Everything you do in life is a, half the things you do in life is a, this, it's mental, bro. It's a mental thing. I don't understand what mode that fuck nigga, he just does it. He just wills his way to, I don't get it. I don't be getting it, bro. Like, la like, bro. It, unless he gets like hurt or something. Like, bro, I'm so mad when he tweets his ankle last year, bro. That shit hurt me. Said I'm on three plus right now. If I'm being honest, hope my feelings shoot out like a rocket. Niggas thought they had the swag, but I'm really on it. Look at you, just window shopping that new bag I bought.